the child has to hear language. They have to hear it to begin to understand. And later, as the muscles of the throat and mouth and larynx develop, they will be able to speak. I'll just eat with the banana. Good juice. Good juice. With language, we have both receptive language and expressive. For the infant, they are receiving language. And if they're ever going to talk and express themselves, they, that has to be a, a period of rich language experience. We know it is important to read to children. With infants, it's important to show them little books that have realistic pictures like photographs and maybe just one or two pictures on a page and that you give them the name for that picture because uh, an infant so new to the world doesn't know the names of things. Everything is new and strange. So part of the important task of the young child is to adapt to his time and culture. Wipe your hands one more time. What we recommend is to, to, out of respect for the child, before you do something to them, to tell them what you're going to do. Even a newborn, I'm going to change your diaper now. So the child hears the voice and looks up at the mother. At least they've heard the voice. So right from the beginning, we tell the child what we're going to do. And while we're doing it, we often say what we are doing. Are you ready to go back inside? You know, ready? now I'm going to put your dry diaper on. We don't have to explain why, we just say what we're doing. And that was, um, that's important. Just because they need to hear language doesn't mean that you go on and tell them everything you know, because that's too much. You know, it's just the basic words. Great, where's your spoon? Show me where your spoon is. Can you show it to me like this? And so that's why we give the child uh, realistic pictures or real there's objects, so that the that? child will learn not only the names of these objects and, and pictures, but also their, their use of their function. What's this? Can you pick that up and tell me what it is? Therefore, we do not decorate the child's room or give them images such as Mickey Mouse. It seems like many adults feel that is what you should surround children with. That is childlike. That is not really what the child needs at this time in his life. Uh, I certainly recommend not reading uh, the classic fairy tales to young children. Very often, those books were uh, written to frighten children, and therefore, I feel that you should wait until children can read them themselves, and they'll probably be most likely at an age in which they understand that this is not real. Who lives? Who lives here? She. When the child has a firm understanding of real objects and so on, that adds pleasure and fun to a child's life. Growled. But uh, it's just the, the timing. If you point to the picture and tell them the name of that picture or that object, and that's really important because you know they've made the association between the picture and the word. Children love this. Young children will look at the same book over and over and want you to point, ask them to point uh, to the objects even though they know them very well. So along with that, we can read poetry and so forth, even though they may not understand the words. They love the rhythm of the, uh, the poem, so it's good for them to have those kinds of experiences. Make noise. Good job. Almost finished, babe. All right. All done. It's important done. that when we speak to children, that we speak slowly and clearly, and giving them time to hear what you've said and that you wait for an answer.
So communication is extremely important because we set the, be set the standard, the foundation for it, right from the very beginning. You might even say from the beginning of interpreting the child's cry. Yes, and I'm going to put my gloves on. Okay. Are you looking at your diaper? One should speak in their, your regular tone of voice and not uh, use baby talk um, to children. <laughs> It's a bunny rabbit. Although we know that there is what is called parentese, and we do know that we automatically speak in higher, uh, a higher tone, and uh, we also know that that is more attractive to uh, young children, and they attend better. So raising the tone of the voice is uh, to a higher tone will get a child's uh, attention and hold it a little longer, but that still doesn't mean um, that one needs to talk baby talk, so to speak. If I can lift you and squeeze you and fly all day long. The thing is, children need uh, stimulation. They are attracted to uh, all the sensory input, but for young children, because of the immaturity of their neurological system, they can't screen out uh, stimuli very well. And so, although, uh, so we control, we try to control the amount of stimulation that they're receiving at the time, and we set priorities for that.